it's so peaceful and quiet. I hear a little bit of background noise from the city down the hill. I hear the mockingbird screaming and birds flying around. Oh, 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 oh. There's a, that's a hummingbird. He's flying around the chair garden and there's birds everywhere. Hi, it is Robbie from Southern California and we're going to have a windstorm, they say, today. So I figured I'd get out here in the morning and kind of walk around and show you what has not happened. Actually, there are things going on. A lot are in my head and I know what I'm going to do, but a lot are going on. This is the turmeric that I planted from nothing more than... Whoa, the scrub jays are flying by. Nothing more than just the leaves from this great big pepper tree. This pepper tree has given me free soil. We all have to make free soil if you're planting and you want to make your own matter to grow in. It just works much better, but it's worked out really well. These would have been even bigger had I put them out in the spring. This was a group of turmeric that was left in a tote. It started to grow in the tote and I had to get it out because Gary didn't have room for it. I already had set up my turmeric garden in the front, which is in the front yard. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to plant it. So I had little tiny pieces. There's a video on this that were, you know, that were in the totes. So I put them here. So these are the teeny little pieces. Remember, I've got a whole video on you can grow turmeric from the skin. You don't need the whole tuber. You can actually grow it from the skin. Now the first year, you will get small turmeric because it has to develop the rhizome. But right now, I'm just really excited with that. We're not doing a turmeric video. We're actually going to walk around the garden and see what's going on. This has been magnificent, and I don't know if it will be here in two weeks. If our weather continues to stay, let's walk cold at night, then all this will die back. It's already starting to show stress of dying back, but that's okay because now it is telling the rhizomes, the bottom part of their plant, it is time to go into hibernation and that's when everything goes in there and that's when the swelling get bigger. So if they're small right now, they're going to get a little bit bigger before they go into hibernation. So that's why I don't want to touch this unless I have to. There's turmeric for me to take. I can use it right now or I could just wait and harvest the whole thing as soon as it dies back. Look at the trees are changing color, some of them. A lot of them are evergreen, but a lot of them will be going dormant through the winter. Haven't done anything in here, but I actually just got some onions I ordered. So I'm going to clear out one tote in here and plant some onions and start going through all this. I'm not going to wait to see if the watermelon is going to grow. I'm going to let the beans do their thing in here. These are purple beans. Aren't they gorgeous? We actually eat these. I come out here. They're all through here. I take the small ones off. Not usually that small, but something like this and slice it up and put it in our omelet or whatever in the morning. And then I'm letting a lot of them just grow so I can collect the seeds. I'm going to get rid of all the dead part of the beans here because the roots will grow back on those later. I, if I decide not to gut that and start over. The celery in this tote is doing so beautiful that I may just clean it up and leave the celery. So that I'll decide later. Nothing has to be decided now. And of course the Swiss chard. I can't grow squash or zucchini or any of that stuff I want. So I don't want to pull anything out. I will start pulling it out when it's time to think about spring and I want it to compost in. But anything that's growing right now, like in here, I've got different squash. Some of them, especially if they're in the zucchini family, they tend to actually throw some fruit in the winter. You'll suddenly go out there and find the zucchini growing, but you're not going to find it really on spaghetti squash or, or butternut squash. Any of those, they're pretty much done. I'm not sure on the shark fin melon. And there is a great big shark fin melon right there. I don't know if you can see it. See, see that? They just keep growing and growing. I don't know enough about them. I just know they're all over the place. So I'm going to have to do, I haven't even cooked one yet. I'm going to have to do something with that. I'm going to have to bring it in and decide how I'm going to do it. The problem with this shark fin melon is it is loaded with seeds. Think of a watermelon. So you've got to get the seeds out, but I've got ideas on how to do that. So we'll see, to make life easier. You could do it, but I mean, it's like, it's a big ordeal to go in there and get all those seeds out. But I, like I said, I have ideas. I don't know if you can see it. It's the scrub jays and all the birds flying around. Isn't it pretty? Everything is so green. You know why? We've had rain. Periodically, we suddenly get rain from the sky, water falling, and the plants are loving it. 
The pomegranates, they're going to go dormant. I've got one already back there dormant. Here's the one here, right here in the corner here by the truck bed. It's already lost all its leaves. This one has more shade. Anything that has more shade loses its leaves and goes into its hibernation first. And then you'll notice here, this one gets a lot more sun, so it's slower. It will come back quicker in the spring. They start to grow sometimes as early as February if they're in the sun, and then they hold on to their leaves longer because they have the sun. So, all in all, everything is the same here. We've got sow thistle and wild rocket growing here in the corner because it gets a lot of water and nothing's eating it. So it continues to grow and that brings in food seeds for birds and pollinators. Then this is still wild. This is like my meadow. The uh, moringa got too big. Once it loses its leaves for the winter, I'll probably trim it way down and I'm gonna grow more moringa. Oh my goodness, look how big the pods are. I'll collect the seeds and I'm gonna grow a lot more in buckets so I can have them when they're smaller. I mean, I don't wanna be climbing up to get the leaves and I actually do use the leaves. I put that in my green drink. And let me tell you something, I can feel the difference when I have Moringa and when I don't have Moringa in my, you know, in my body. I actually feel the difference just having greens. I can start to feel uh, drab, I'll do that later. But as soon as I have a green drink, it's like a pick me up. It's, it's amazing. And I have to get in the habit of drinking more green drink daily because sometimes I do get lazy. Look at the tomatoes. We've had hornworms and I've had a, you know, moves, remove some of them, some of them I miss, but it is loaded with tomatoes. So I may be able to have tomatoes all year. This is a sunflower. I'm trying to get a sunflower to grow for my neighbor. And as soon as I see it opens, I'll get it over to her because it's off season right now. They shouldn't be growing, but I've got it up against the wall. It's warm, so I'm kind of tricking it. I probably will trick a few things. So here, what I'm gonna do is kind of leave it. Most of the squash growing in here, these are in the zucchini family. When I say family, they might be hybridized with something, but I have been picking zucchini. So as soon as, see, there's one. See a little one? Isn't that beautiful right there? So what I'm gonna do is leave that for the winter, being up against the wall. It may throw the occasional zucchini in the winter. And then come after the holidays, I'll start to gut a lot of these and start to put it back into the tote so I'm making my own soil. So I'll do that later. Nothing here, this is just potatoes. That's potato mint, but see the potatoes? I'm gonna start growing a lot of potatoes, I've decided. Because there's nothing nicer than having fresh potatoes and it's so easy to harvest when you do it in an easy way. I've got another way I'm going to set up in different types of containers, but that has just been fantastic. You just tip it out, take the potatoes and put it back. It's the easiest thing to do. I don't know if I'll do another cardboard box garden, only because nothing made it in there. All the zucchini that was in there died back. There's just, it just didn't work as good. And yet the, you know, containers, like I said, the totes, they keep going. They're gonna go all winter here because we don't have snow. If we get really cold, see, there I am. If we get really cold, they'll die back. That's okay, all those leaves on the zucchini plants, all of them will turn into soil for me. And look at the ground. You used to have wood chips, it's all soil now. Now this was a surprise. This was struggling and struggling. It's in a container in a bucket and all of a sudden I come out here the other day, look at this. It is just growing. Oh, we're starting to get windy. They said not till later. Look at this, isn't this gorgeous? I might take that in tonight. And more flowers are coming and everything. Do I see another zucchini back here? No, most of these are male flowers. We'll see what happens. Now tomato plant probably will be dead. Oh, I'm tricking my cucumbers. I'm making it think it's warmer than it is. And let me tell you something, it's working. Let me see, I can take this off. I'm gonna be doing a lot of tricking. I'll come back later. Okay, so we've been in the 40s at night. There's a cucumber there. There's a little wonky cucumber there. And there's another one there. And we'll see if it throws any more. Is that cool? Then I've got the walking onions growing there. And I've even got okra. We've actually picked some. I don't think this one made it. But um, I've had okra on that, so we've been picking that. And I pick them when they're small and put them in our eggs. That's an eggplant. I'm not gonna cut it back right now because it went to flower. 
And as long as our weather is not too cold, we might be able to get some more eggplant. I've had eggplant in the winter. So we'll see how that goes. Tomato plant, again, we're now suffering with tomato hornworms. So I've got to periodically go through and look for them. So what the birds don't get, you know, some of them make it, some of them don't. I don't see any right now, but this is the damage. When you see this on tomato plants, you know that there was a hornworm. See how they eat the tops? I don't see any here. Oh, nope. I have a hawk that follows me around. When he sees me out here, it's a great big red shoulder. He'll come up here and he'll sit and he'll wait to see if I'm gonna to toss any off. I haven't seen any, but I can see the damage. This is the tomato plant that's growing all through there. The corn is done. I just have to compost that. And nothing here. You know, this is, this is just gonna be left. I'm probably going to, on days I'll come out here, I'll start to go through that is what I'm gonna do. And then I'll start to figure out what I'm gonna grow in the spring. I wanna enjoy the holidays. I'm watching Hallmark. I'm watching the Great American Family Channel, which I happen to really like. They have such great movies this year. So that's been a good challenge. You do have to get that on, let's see, I don't think DirecTV's got it. You know, they may. Dish has it, but I bought this new app for my smart TV called Friendly, and it's not spelled that way. They drop the vowels, and it's got, it's got all kinds of channels on there, and it only costs, what, six, seven dollars a month. So you can't beat that. And then you can cancel at any time. Purple tree colored, look at this. Malabar spinach reaching to the sky. It probably will. But yep, it's going all the way up the wall. And like I said, here I haven't done anything. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna sit down, hopefully in the next couple days and get all the peppers off and freeze those. Cause I've been using a lot, oh, there's another pepper on this. So we've got, those are bigger peppers. They're a different type of pepper. That's the black cobra and that's the Fresno down there. And then, like I said, here I'll go through here when I want. So let's just kind of take a quick walk because there really isn't anything new. I mean, plants are growing and food is growing. If I wanted to eat the Malabar spinach, I've got plenty of Malabar spinach. I've got green sorrel, use that in eggs and different things, green drink, red vein sorrel on the top. So everything's growing. I just haven't done anything. Here I will probably go through in the spring and decide I'd maybe slightly set things up a little different and then maybe get some more squash later, or zucchini. Zucchini's my favorite. I did freeze a lot this year, so I have plenty. And then the other thing I want to do, I keep saying I'm going to do it, and I haven't done it yet. So I want to go through and collect all this. This is garlic chives, and these are the seeds. If I don't collect it, it's just going to fall on the ground disappear. This is like a waste. These upside down planters, you used to see them on my deck, and now they're here. You know, the only thing they're really, really good for, yeah, well, they're growing walking onions and garlic chives, but really lettuce off the ground and covered. And I think that's what I'm going to do very soon. Get rid of a lot of this stuff, maybe get all the seeds off the hmm, garlic chives, maybe move that plant, because I can put those closer to the ground. See, there's a garlic chive on the bottom here, and nothing touches it. The rabbits don't eat it, so it's a good place to move it. So pull this out and then make a little tent like I do with whether I use placemats or tote lids, and then I can have a cover from the birds and insects, and I can grow lettuce all winter here, and I think I'll do that fairly soon. Yeah, the avocado tree is still there. And then these are carrots. I actually ate one yesterday, and I did not do a video. I'm just going in here and pulling them out, and they're so good. They're wonky, but I'm gonna change that up this year too. I'm gonna make sure any place I wanna grow carrots, seriously, I'm gonna make sure the soil is nice and fluffy so it grows straight. But let me tell you something, even the wonky ones that are zigzag, they taste fantastic. The taste doesn't change. Now this is getting cold, it's going to see, this is popolo, and these are gonna pop open soon. Then they'll be flying everywhere. You would think this particular plant throwing millions of seeds, when this opens, there's like 100 seeds in each of these pods, there's literally a ton of them, you would think you would have them all over and you don't. For some reason, it tastes very much like cilantro. That's why a lot of people grow it because you can grow that all summer. It loves the heat. The baby plants are eaten by insects and birds. The second they get their main leaves and they have the taste of cilantro, that's when nothing touches it. And the other thing is there's no pollinators on here. 
So it's totally self-pollinating. So I will probably collect some of the seeds and plant them someplace purposely. I did have some growing way down in the meadow that down there by the ponds. I'll probably plant some more there. I don't use it. Gary does. I don't, I just don't care for it. But he loves it. He comes out here and he, he can put it in his food. But you, even one leaf in one big dish, you put in a frying pan, one, one leaf, you'll taste it. So I let him put in what he wants and I just don't use it, but he loves it. So you don't get the plants you think. Unlike sow thistle, do I have any? There's sow thistle. Now this does fly around. See how it grows? A seed landed, this is no joke, in one of these drain holes. To see, you can stick my finger in there. Isn't this funny? So a seed got there and it grew. See? It doesn't take much to grow sow thistle. And that I do use in my green drain. I'm leaving that what's left for the birds and then I'll pull it out and compost it. But that, they just get eaten up. So you, you really have to put them someplace and cover them. I saw somebody do a whole video on it. It was so funny. And he threw all the seeds. He said, we're going to come back and see all the popolo growing. He never came back because they didn't grow. They, he didn't have anything to show. As soon as the tiny, tiny seedlings popped through, everything ate them, whether it was insects, birds, everything ate them. But if you protect them very simply with, let's say, a, a cup or something, put a cup over it, an open cup, something where roly-polies can't get to them, birds can't get to them, you would have thousands of those plants. So you have to be careful growing them. That's basically it. But they are really fun to grow and they're pretty. They're beautiful plants. They can get six foot tall, easily six foot tall. And then here, I'm gonna go through and gut this. This is done. This was a two-year-old basil. And I tricked this plant into growing. See the cup on the bottom? Not this. This is how you would grow a popolo. You put that over the popolo. No birds would bother it. And you could put netting on top of this. But see the pot down? See that? That's a coffee container. I don't know if I can reach in and show you. Yeah. See that? I know how to trick a lot of plants. And I had that basil growing all last year. Two years old and it finally died back. So it's gone now. So I'm going to trick a few plants into growing for the winter and then I'll have it and then in the spring I'll start more. And this tomato plant, this was from last year and I left it and it did quite well. And it's still throwing tomatoes. Look, look at all the green tomatoes still coming. Isn't that beautiful? So I still have tomatoes growing here and further down there. So I should have a few tomatoes here and there all winter and then I froze a lot too. Let's go in the front yard. I didn't even see this. Oh, we're going to get this in. Look at this. It's cracked probably from the weather, but you know what? Let me move this. Who cares? Look at the size of this. That's fantastic. I will come back and get that later and do something with that for dinner. Maybe I'll make enchiladas and slice it up and put it on top. Okay, we're now in the front yard. This is the raised bed Gary built me out of cement. Isn't that beautiful? This is a puzzle. You've seen this many times. It comes apart. You can move this anywhere. So if I was moving, I would take it with me and then I've got my totes inside. Now you could fill it with soil and do it that way, but I like the totes. So there I've got some different brassicas growing. I've got a purple tree colored. Oh, you just saw the tomatoes. I'm not setting up anything until spring. Who knows, maybe I'll change it up completely in the spring. Then I've got my lime growing. That's doing really good, the finger lime. This is just some geraniums I started. I should move that into the bird garden. Walking onions. Pretty much what you saw two weeks ago is the same, but what's different is any brassicas that are here because of the rain are taking off, which is fabulous. So here, it's kind of doing its own thing. There is sweet potato down there, and I should go and look and see if there's any sweet potatoes. But everything is still doing the same thing you saw. And then I just put a dish pan here for now. I love my dish pans some potato mint. And the potato mint here is not doing as good, so it's not getting enough sun or warmth. This loves the heat. It can be 110 and it loves it. A little bit of red roselle. I had some. I planted, so I just stuck it in there. These are baby tomato plants coming up. They're, tomato plants are contaminating in all my soil. They come up everywhere in the soil. I can move them or leave them. And then this is sow thistle. So I could leave it or, like I said, just pull them out and all this turns into free soil. As soon as you take something off and lay it aside, it immediately is creating soil for you. Keep that in mind. You can probably, probably make all the soil you wanted and needed if you really thought about it. And it holds water. 
leaf matter that dries up is beautiful. It holds water and it's just really, to me, just as good as potting soil. There are birds everywhere. I'm thinking of taking the tool off and just going here because I don't need to grow any more food here with just different geraniums through here. Who knows, maybe I'll stick some small zinnias in here. But I'm gonna probably take that off because I've had it up here for a couple of years and I don't think anything's gonna bother the geraniums. After all, I have geraniums here and nothing bothers it. Okay, this is the turmeric, ginger, and stevia table. The stevia is struggling. And yeah, now it's got zinnias, look, pink ones, dark pink ones, orange ones. It is struggling because stevia does not like the cold weather either. See how the plants are starting to tip? Let me step back so you can see this. What is going on is they're getting the signal that the cold, wet season is coming. So I'm going to have to go through here soon, not yet, probably end of December and start either moving them, covering them lightly. I can't cover them completely. If all these plants died back and I put a solid cover on this, it wouldn't be microbes living in there. It would be cutting off a lot of the oxygen. I'd end up with mold, actual mold, and that would, that would eat up all my ginger and turmeric. So I have to decide on what I'm going to do. Some of them will be fine, but if we have a lot of rain, it doesn't do good in wet, cold soil. Remember that and you'll do okay. Now, I can take all these pots if I wanted to and I can bring them in the house. I can bring them in a garage. I can put them under a carport. They don't mind the cold. They don't want to be soggy, wet, and cold. That's what will eat up all the ginger and turmeric that are already in the pots. What I usually do if I get the time, and you've seen it, I take the pots, I dump them all out, get everything out that I want, and then pack them in totes. Don't cover it too tightly and leave them there dormant. But I'm still leaving it. Like I said, right now, the plants are gonna start to die back and all the nutrients and the signal that we're going into hibernation is now going back into the bottom part of the plant, okay, which is underneath. And they're all different. If you got ginger, it goes across the top. If you got turmeric growing, which is this with the wider leaf, turmeric will go all the way to the bottom. If I had a deeper pot, it would go even deeper than that. See this pot is bigger? I can find turmeric all the way down here. But if it was ginger, ginger would be across the top. It spread sideways, turmeric spread sideways and down. So now it's sending the signal, like I said, and they're gonna get bigger. So they may be a good size right now, but they will even be bigger in the next week or so. So that's why I'm leaving it. But if I needed it, of course I can reach in. I took some the other day. I just reached in and grabbed a whole clump of turmeric out, and then I did the same thing with ginger. So that's it. I think this is wonderful. I love this table. And this has been the perfect, perfect temperature climate for ginger and turmeric. That's why it grows so well. I've even had it flower here. Gets the morning sun, which it's getting now. The sun is just coming over the trees. And then in the summer, the sun will drop beyond the house. And by 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, it doesn't have any more sun. And it won't burn. They will burn. You put this in direct sunlight, 100 degrees, and it will burn. I don't know what that is. You know, I think I've got a praying mantis there. Let's see. Look at that. Look at that. I have not seen a praying mantis in there. Isn't that cool? There's something in there. As long as it doesn't fly at me. I don't mind anything as long as it doesn't come at me. When it starts coming at me, that's a different story. So that's basically it. So now let's go into the bird garden. We're now in the bird garden. Look at the, the brassicas. I want you to look at this as we walk by. Even though I haven't done too much, I'm starting to clean. I'm keeping buckets around here, loading in leaves because this is going to be all my new soil I'm going to grow in. The leaves are magnificent. Even on plants that are broke and struggling, because of all the rain. We keep getting rain. And what's the other thing, what's interesting, is we keep getting dragon fruit flowers. So I don't know how many will make it because the weather's cold. That's broccoli back there. I want to clear this out later on in the year. I can't believe how, it's like a field of green. It's gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. Look at the geraniums there. Look at the purple tree colored. Yes, I have a secret garden behind there. Gary's been working on it. 
and I want to walk through that another day and show you what he's been doing. I don't know. He's got plans on the secret garden. It's right on the other side. I don't think I can get through here without getting stuck. Let me see. Can you see back there? See, he built a staircase there. We'll go through this another day soon, maybe within the next day or two. So we'll look at that. But let's stay with what we usually do right now, and then we'll look through true later look at the dragon fruit there we've got dra dragon fruit everywhere and on the other side in the secret hidden garden the dragon fruit there is the size of cantaloupe that you would buy at the grocery store they're so big so that's one thing we've had a lot is dragon fruit even though we did lose a lot for the birds they found it and started really tearing them apart we still have had plenty i've given some to my granddaughter look at this they are just beautiful the brassicas are growing and then this is purslane and we're losing all the purslane now. Oh, see, they've emptied the seeds because the goldfinches are going crazy eating this plant. They're actually shredding it and they're eating all the seeds off of it. This is gone. This was a cutting from my original dinosaur kale and I know it's, it's done. I've got some other cuttings off of it, but this was like the original plant I planted here in the corner. It used to be along the fence and it died back, but it had a lot of cuttings and this one just died back. It's probably at end of life. They'll, they'll last if you don't take out your dragon, your, not your dragon fruit. Dragon fruit will last. You can make cuttings. We're making cuttings everywhere. Your dinosaur kale, though, they can go for a good five or six years. Easy if you take care of it, trim it back, and then continue to take cuttings, and you can have it almost for decades. See, this is, let's see. I think I've got, I'm not sure, but this might be a piece of it, but I know I've got some on the other side of the yard. This is gonna to have to be staked up because it's getting too big. Everything took off and just into massive growth because of the rain. It loves rainwater. And so everything, even this is so big, probably should take that out, also get lettuce and things growing there and put that somewhere so it grows into a nice, beautiful tree, a different brassica. Then I've got my strawberry mint. See, the leaf is different on the strawberry and that's chocolate mint. So this is a round, I don't want to say shiny, but see how smooth and nice it looks? That strawberry has more of a wild look. Smells wonderful and in my opinion, tastes terrible when it comes to tea. All right, and in here, I'm still working on in here. I've got most of all my cross beams from the tree limbs wired in. So hopefully it won't go anywhere. You might see the occasional tape, you know, painter's tape up there and some zip ties, but I have been going through and hard wiring it in just with wire. And then I can get in there and set everything the way I want. But it's been working really good. Look, with the wind and rain, I keep losing different brassicas. See, this is a perfect cutting. You'd have a nice straight tree by taking a piece like this and just propagating it that way. I'm not worried about it right now. The main thing is keep the food coming for the birds and slowly build this up and then I can go in there and thin out what I don't want and then add in more water features. I want a ton of homemade water features. I wanna make some more out of cement and we'll do that probably together. So I've got different flowers in here now. I've got different emu plants, which grows a beautiful flower that the hummingbirds love. And then of course the zinnias, which I only planted once. You probably saw it. And now it drops seeds and grows everywhere. And then I've got my little rose bush back there. I bought that at the 99 cent store. I'm gonna say, six, seven years ago, has no thorns. I don't believe I propagated that. I was gonna propagate it, but I don't think I ever did. So I should propagate that one. There is no thorns on that rose bush back there. Isn't that gorgeous? Kind of like a, it reminds me of a popsicle I had as a kid that would be red and orange. It was a blend. It was beautiful and it tastes good. I love that color. But I bought it because I was in there and I looked at the plant. There was like zero thorns on it. So I grabbed it. What do we see there? Oh, we got goldfinches all over here. And that's basically it here. Look at the leaves here because of the rain. This is colored. Look at this. Look at the size of the, look at this. Just plain colored. Isn't that something because of the rain? All through there, colored. And there's even a papaya you can't see back there, but I can see the leaves. They're back there. My papaya I planted early on should take off. So I want to get this cleaned up. Let's keep going because I really haven't done anything. Birds keep coming in to take a bath. This is, some of these might be colored hybrids that came in. See how the leaf is long? Now this, let me see where this is planted. Oh, see it fell and broke. 
I'm trying to propagate this one. Oh, see, look at this one. I want to move this out. Isn't that gorgeous? This is, I don't believe this is a tree collar. I believe it's a cross between something and it's beautiful. So I want to move that out. A lot of this got moved early on. We had a plumbing problem last year and we moved some of this stuff and I never moved it back. I still don't know where I want to put that tote. So I will probably empty it and move it later, but I'm just flabbergasted on the green growth. All the green growth because of the rain. The doves want to come in. This is the plant I love and I am propagating this. Gorgeous, gorgeous plant, big round leaves. Isn't this something? I believe this is a three-way and it's in the bucket back there. Actually, this one, yep, it's growing in this tub back there. And so I've been doing propagating on that. Let's keep going because there really isn't anything new here. I should look through here one day, see if there's sweet potatoes, there's sage. Then that's the baby walking onions I put there and they're growing, they're not babies anymore. And then some more garlic chives. Then I've got, that's another tree colored. So I'm gonna to have to go through here when I get serious and thin it out and I plan on doing that. I know, I plan on it. And now I got a new garden on the other side, the secret garden. It's like I'm wanted to thin down on the gardens and it seems like more and more are coming. I've got eggplant back here. Oh yeah, still have an eggplant on there. It's probably more than that. If you give your eggplant some shelter, and you're not in snow, you can get eggplant. I've got tomatoes in here too, look at that. There is a tomato plant. I'll have to get through here and see what's in here. You can trick some of these plants to grow in the winter. And that's what I'm doing with some of them. You can do it all different ways. This is in the ground. This is a dinosaur cutting. See, this is one from my plant. I wanna get more cuttings off of that because the original plant would be Jeez, I'm going to say at least six, seven years old. It'd be my first plant. And then there, just more, this is, the, this is more of the brassica. This is the one that I love. This is a cutting I put here. Look at the size of the leaves. This is in the ground. Let's see if I can get you down there. See, it's in the ground, but it's in a pot. Now the pot, like that one, has an open bottom. And it also directs the water, which is very important to the plant. See, I had a plant growing here directly in the ground and that one died. That one is totally gone. But any of them that were in an open bottom pot, including that one, that's a tree colored back there, because it gets direct water, they made it. But this one did not because I could water it and it could go in a different direction. This forces the water to go to the plant roots, which is extremely important, especially if you're in a drought area, warm area, the plant has to get some water. And if it's not going to the roots, it's being redirected, whether it's gophers, moles, ants, then the plant can die back. My papayas. I hope to have one of these in the bird garden. I've got some papayas now growing behind us under the gazebo. And if it makes it, that will be really cool. Can you imagine birds hanging out on there, eating up all my papayas as they turn orange? Okay, maybe not such a great idea. I could also tool it if I wanted to. So this is doing okay. I love this plant. This was an accident, came up in my tote, left it there and look at that. I've got a Moringa still growing back here. Let me see if I can step over here. See the Moringa? It's growing there, it's drooping over. Trim a lot, I'm gonna trim a lot of these back later and just grow them from seed. I had thrown some seeds in here and the seeds grew. So I'm just gonna start them from fresh each spring when the weather's warm. I'll probably start them in the house in paper cups and then drop them out here. Sometimes Moringa does not like to be moved. So if you plant it in a pot I have found and then you move them, I have lost them. A lot of people have told me that too. But if you plant them in paper cups, you just pop the bottom, put them in the ground. You can use milk cartons too, cause they'll look at the size of them. See what they do? They'll bust out on their own and they don't think they got moved. They just think they push something over and they just keep going. So that works out really, really well. And then here, that's Gary's room. I haven't even been in there. I think he's got seeds starting. See, I don't know what he's doing in there. But anyways, we've got celery and then there's mint in here. And this is my pride and joy. And I have been doing a lot of propagating off of, over that. Um, I bought it years ago as a plant, just, in a, just a purple, you know, Russian red kale, but look at the coloring. So that's why I want propagating, you know, plants off of it because you'll only get the plant what you see here. If I had seeds and tried to grow it, every seed is different. Let's step out the gate. 
every seed that you plant, whether you save it from a dragon fruit, squash, will be different because it's an individual like a person. It's going to be slightly, you know, have its own characteristics. But if you want something that's exactly the same, then you take a cutting off the plant and you won't get anything different. Unless you have something going on with different limbs of trees, but otherwise you won't. It will all be exactly the same. Pomegranates. I still have a couple pomegranates there. I've got some there. And I've got some back there. I've got to climb in there and get it. And then here, um, I don't know if this tree is going to make it. It struggled with the drought. So this one may not make it, this one might. If it looks like it's pulling, I may get that one out and leave the smaller one. This time, this is in a cardboard box, but it's, see it's up against the ground. So it's going into the ground. It can bust through the box and then grow there really, really good. So I'm hoping that makes it really well. And then more pomegranate. See, there's another pomegranate. There's another pomegranate there. And then I've got the polka dot plant, which kind of went wild and it's going to go into flowering and spread its seed. I like that. We talked about that. They sell the polka dot plant as an indoor plant for $8, but you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get, get it for an outdoor covering, like a ground cover, and you get a whole tray for like $3.88, which I bought one tray and I've got polka dot plant in the house now. I've got it everywhere. So that's basically it. Now let's go step into my beautiful rainbow garden that is going to change. I could say a work in progress in the rainbow garden, but you know what? A lot has been done. So really all I need to do this spring is start planting. That's my potato mint. Let's swing over here. Potato mint, more there. Same thing like the ginger and the turmeric. As soon as it dies back, and it will, as soon as the weather gets really cold, I will go in there and dig the tubers. Right now, all the growth is on the top. And as soon as it knows it's gonna die back, all the growth goes into the bottom, just like ginger and turmeric. You get much more yield and a better yield if you wait, but you don't have to wait, but I am going to go into there. Look at this, my habaneros, look at this. We have been eating these and I did find out, I forgot that I had given Gary also a pepper plant. So I grew two of them and they're doing fabulous. This is just a zinnia, needs more sun. So they're really struggling. But look at that. I don't want to trim the bottom yet. It's see the bottom. This is what you got to look at. It's being sheltered by this. And see all the flowers? The plant's tricked. It thinks it's warmer than it is. Then I've got the red roselles. I've been bringing that in. I'm going to collect the seeds as well as make tea out of it. I know you can do all kinds of stuff. And this is now all set up. Just a matter of making the holes, start throwing stuff in here, and I can plant in the spring. I'm not gonna rush the plant now, no reason. I've got the water fountain there, which I now put my solar fountain panel up on the top. Look at that. This will lose all its leaves soon, and fig tree leaves are wonderful. So collect your fig tree leaves if you've got potato mint. Oh, God, I've gotta get this off. Got a great big squash here growing in a squash that's growing in here. Still have tomatoes. It's struggling, but you know what? I still will get tomatoes probably through the winter until it gets really, really cold. See how nice they are? So we're still getting tomatoes. Here is okra and here I just planted some lettuce. I will go through here and thin a lot of this out. I don't want this. All I want are, is this, this, and this. Those are the lettuce. These are not, these are probably weeds. I do not think I threw flower seeds in there. And I want the lettuce to grow in here. So we're gonna take all that out, including that, just tossing it in here. Now the lettuce is covered. Why is it covered? Oh, look, okra. See the okra? Still getting okra. The reason it's covered is so I won't get insects on there because the insects love lettuce and the birds won't eat it. So that should grow really good. I don't think I have any squash on this. I think I did and I took it off. Nope, I don't see any. That doesn't mean there isn't any. See, here's a cutting. This is a cutting from that purple kale, the, uh, the red Russian kale from my bird garden. And see how beautiful it is? If I grew it from seed, I may not get it that rich and purple. That's why I wanna do trimmings, cuttings off of it and propagate that way. Now this is Korean melon, but I don't know if they're gonna really grow good now because our weather's gotten so cold, but it's trying 
There's been Korea melon in different places. Actually, I've got some growing up against the wall back there. I don't know if it's going to make it. If it does, it does. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. These are zinnias. I'm just letting them do its thing. This is just grass leaves. Actually, it's bird seed. Something dropped bird seed in there, so it's growing. And I can take the bird seed out and just drop it in there and becomes part of my soil in there and it feeds the plant. That's why this is doing so well. Look at all this. All this Korean melon is trying to grow in here because it's being fed by this. That's the pitcher. I love the pitchers. It's just so easy to open and close. You can use anything, but the pitchers make life easier. Just open and close it. And if you wanted to make sure you could water it, see how the pitcher's got an opening? You can open that way and you could just water in there. If you don't want anything to get in there, turn it and it's now sealed. I love my pitchers. I'm gonna have pitchers everywhere. This is my pepinos. I saw these at the grocery store for $2 each. So there's another one back there. So I've been picking those and they keep growing. They'll slow down probably for the winter. Red vein sorrow. And again, this is a seedling that came off a couple years ago when I first started the rainbow garden off my black cobra. See, they're black, and then they turn red later. They're actually ripe when they're red, but you can use them when they're green or black. It doesn't really matter. This I just planted potatoes in. I've got it well labeled, so I know what I put in there, and we'll see how this goes, but it's in a bucket so I can move it if I want later. So for now, I sat it here because I might put some onions in there. I haven't decided yet for the winter. And then this is walking onions. It's a two system. I can lift this. It's going to be loaded with earthworms. And that is milkweed that came up from seed on its own. And I'm leaving it. Look at my tomatoes. There's tomatoes everywhere. Is this cool? Now this plant hopefully will make it all winter and I'll have tons of tomatoes. I got to cater to it a little bit more. I've been trimming it and as it gets cold, see it gets a lot of brown leaves. You don't throw the leaves away. Oh, and then peppers came up in here. Look, isn't that cool? This is a little two system made out of two flower pots. This is funny. I don't think, oh, there is a squash. We'll have to go on the other side. So the peppers came up on the top and I left them, okay? And this is where I grew watermelon. It's still trying, but I know it's not gonna make it. It actually might be edible as soon as it's done. It's not quite done yet. I don't even know where the, there's the tendril. But the thing is, it's, it's too cold right now. But what's cute is the top, the peppers grew, and then on the bottom, a squash came through, and I was gonna pull the squash out, and I didn't. And I'll show you why. We'll walk around in a second. More tomatoes, more tomatoes in here. This one's growing out of this one. And then a piece of tomato mint got in there, a potato mint got in there, and it just took over. So we'll harvest that later and see. And this was a teeny, teeny black, turmeric that I threw in the pot. I didn't even think it was any good and it's growing. So I'll probably change that into a bigger pot later. Actually, I want to put it back exactly where it was because that's where it's happy. And then this is where I'm propagating everything. Look at that. Now, some of the cuttings are green when they're little, but that's okay. When I plant it out later, it should go back to its purple cut, you know, color. And then this is this, is, I did label this, so let me see. Okay, so this is the sun gold, and I'm hoping I can keep this little plant in shock and here. When I say shock, I don't want it to try to grow all winter. And then come spring, I can put it out and I'll have sun golds right away. A piece of pepino growing, and then different brassicas in here I put in here growing. Let's see, I don't think I put much in here. Same thing, same thing. I do have something different. I don't know if they'll make it. I know that this is patio tomatoes. It, it came off my deck and I'm hoping I can shock it to stay small, but I don't know if it will. And then if it will, I can plant it later. See, everything's contaminated. Even in the top kitty litter, there's a little bit of tomato seed growing. And this is just, isn't that beautiful? Probably tree collared. And then here, I just found some succulent cactus type plants, succulent plants, and they're in kitty litter. Get those started, baby walking onions I found. Same thing in there, I'm doing that. And I told you we we're gonna walk around the back. Things are gonna change back here. I've got ideas. I told Gary to pick me up a couple of the cement blocks because they're so cheap. They're under $2 a piece and I'm gonna set some plants up here. I'm gonna use the backside since the hose is here, it's easy to water. Look at this, I didn't even know until just now with you. Look how beautiful this small zucchini is. It's not even that small. 
Isn't that gorgeous? And that's why I didn't pull it out. It's coming from the bottom. I'm hoping you can see it in there. That was a, a small two system. I haven't lifted this. I don't think I want to because I don't want to kill my plant. I haven't lifted this in a long time. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there's stuff in there and worms. Uh, some, a few worms. i got to get some more food in there. See, if the worms don't have food, they'll leave. So what I'm probably going to do, let's leave that, sorry, like that is I'll go around and I'll collect some more leaves and throw them in the bucket. And if there's leaves, then you get a ton of worms. If there's no food, they're not going to stay. But look at that. It came up on its own. It's going to flower soon. So that'll be really cool. That I love. So that's been the garden tour. Oh, we want to look at the pizza garden. Hear the birds singing. Boy, they say our weather's going to change really, really fast. We're going into a windstorm. And they're saying in the afternoon, 60 mile per hour wind. So we'll see if we get that or not. Sometimes it misses us. See, we've been getting so much water that I left the wheelbarrow here and it got full of water. And now I'm using the water to water the plants. So I still have my peppers growing in my pizza garden. So the peppers are growing here. And as soon as I notice them, I'll pull off any brown leaves. I pick them and I'm freezing them if I'm not using them right away. And then I've got time. Of course, my purple basil, I've got tomato plants, onions, another tomato plant, sage, and that's a tomato plant, and then more the walking onions there. And this one I'm going to set up very soon. I'm going to set this up probably on the back side, as I was telling you, of the rainbow garden. But this, remember, if you learned in school you're, or wherever, they will tell you to remove all fruit when transplanting. I did not. So now I have these tiny fruits. The plant is doing fabulous, throwing more fruit, more peppers. Isn't that cool? This is here just to layer it to some walking onions. But this is just doing fantastic. I actually think I'm going to plant peppers in here. I have so many peppers growing on my windowsill. It won't even matter what kind. If they're hot, I'll mark them hot and we'll know when I'm cooking. If they're mild and sweet, I'll mark them, and I think that would be the perfect place for them since that plant's doing so well. Tree colored, growing in here, and then this is garlic. I planted some garlic in there, so just protecting the garlic. I don't know from what, but I put a lid on it. Didn't plant anything in there, so that's it. And then basil, just growing in this little thing my dad built. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to say how many years ago. Out of buckets, he made this thing so my brother could carry it around while he was working in the yard. He used to do yard work and stuff. And it was kind of like a holder, and they had it, and they gave it to me. So it, you know, I just, the idea that my dad made it, and it, it came from, he used to work at a pickle plant, and they used to hold different relishes and stuff, the buckets, he used to bring buckets home. So it's just a holder, but I've got the polka dot plant here. See, it went to seed too, the polka dot plant, and then I've got the basil, and then I've got the basil down there. So I've got, got it growing on both sides. So that's it. So we've done a spin around. I'm gonna go see what has to be anchored down, because if we get those winds like they're saying, that's going to be really bad. And then here is the potatoes. I'm going to grow some more potatoes. And I bought these at the grocery store. And that's the ones that I planted. I showed you in the red bucket. That was planted there. And I'm going to get a lot of potatoes growing in different areas. And I'm going to make it where it's the easiest way to harvest. I don't care how old you are, young or old. Nobody's old. Young or well young, old or young. And then you'll be able to just tip it, use what you want, put it back, put one, the best one back, and continue to grow. And that's the way I'm going to be growing potatoes. You'll get smaller potatoes, but that would, that's going to be fine. And I didn't show you the hose, but now Gary put another hose bib there. So now I don't have to drag that 100-foot hose as far. And he wants to put another hose bib there because that 100-foot hose must weigh like 50 pounds when it's full of water. It's so heavy to pull. So he's changing up that. So that's it. So now we've done that. Let's go anchor everything down before the winds come. They're saying this afternoon, and hopefully it might just miss us. And sometimes they do. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I'm going to bring some broccoli in for Kitty. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.